Hey Soul Tribe, welcome to your Divine Guidance Reading, where we are spiritual as fuck. If we haven't met yet, my name is High Priestess Barry, Psychic Comedian and Divine Channeler, hoping to bring you a message now. Always remember, listen to your instincts and tap into your intuition. If there is anything that I talk about that doesn't make any sense, totally fine, do not worry about it. This message may not be for you, but you're always welcome to go to my channel. Oh, I am in... Like, I want to call this depression soup <laughs> energies. It's the only way I can kind of get myself to sort of maybe laugh. And even then, it's not that funny. <laughs> um, whoever it is that I'm tuned into right now, chances are, like, you're having a hard time sitting up. You're having a hard time keeping your eyes open. It's... <laughs> jokingly it's like oh it's such a curse and even if you're in an area that took on a time change within the last few days because when this is recorded it was after daylight savings started or ended i don't even know which one it's supposed to be anymore there's so much apathy that i'm picking up from someone right now and so I'm trying to like listen to the tone of my voice and how much i just I don't want to. And it's interesting because in the pre-shuffle, we have the lover's card. The lover's is about making choices. And there's some that's like, I'm just tired of making choices. Maybe it's making choices for other people. Maybe even getting sick and tired of choosing yourself. It's this, I keep choosing myself but it doesn't always seem to work. And this sort of confirms that like a lot of your passions are feeling stuck. A lot of your ideas are feeling really stuck. And you know you have options. You know you can make choices with whomever you wish to, hearing the word shack up with, but doesn't necessarily have to be that. The only reason I hear the shack up is the, there's a key. Sort of as though, do I just stick with a housing situation that I'm accustomed to and take a step back or take a step back from the situation? Or do I move forward with something I'm passionate about? I got six of swords. I'm getting a little bit of made my bed, so maybe I should sleep in it and it's as though you're not necessarily wrong, but it's as though you jumped into this boat and you started swimming to the other side of the shore and you're halfway through. You're almost there. You, deep down inside now, outside of the depression energy that you might be feeling submersed in right now, you've already made it halfway and it's sort of like, do I just double back now or do I just make the choice? It's There's a no turning back energy that I am picking up on right now. Got Ace of Wands. It is this having to break it down and figure out what do you want to do? Do you want to follow what you're passionate about? And how can you make a choice about something that you should be passionate about but you feel so drained thinking about the things that you absolutely want. Um, part of the reason that you're feeling this level of oh, a tower moment is about to happen. Energetically, this is sort of like a little seismology heads up. This pre-warning that something is about to change significantly and there's an energy that is making you hesitate moving forward. And I, I will say right off the bat, this energy isn't your friend. Something that makes you want to take a step back, double back on your word. I committed to this, but this commitment is training the shit out of me. Oh man, we got to keep moving forward. I'm having a difficult time moving through these energies. I almost didn't do a recording because I'm trying to figure out the whole time is, 
is this me or is this the collective? And most of the time the answer is yes. But as we go into, okay, I've got a card that's trying to flip up at me. Oh, there we go. I got a six of swords and in, in, the tried to pop up at the top of the deck. But it is interesting because we do have a ace of swords, clarity, something making a lot of sense, followed by, oh, wait, no, maybe, maybe I should double back. And then you go back to, oh, well, I should move forward. Oh, maybe then I should double back. And before I cut, I want to show you this King of Pentacles. When you are in this depressive soup, you are being encouraged. It's okay to sit still. Do not make important decisions when you're consuming depression soup. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay will be furious with all of you. <laughs> I'm curious underneath. Oh, there we go. Underneath is a two of swords with the ten of pentacles. And this is you second guessing what the long-term plan really is supposed to be for you. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the decks and we're going to be asking, what the fuck do you think might be going on? We'll also be asking the universe, what the fuck could actually be going on? Because spoiler Spoiler alert, we do have a Queen of Swords right here. We'll also ask for a little bit of guidance to help you through these really <sighs> energies. <laughs> we'll look at the final potential outcome. So, you know, I quickly showed you that this Queen of Swords, and this is like that decisive truth. And this is a very loving energy. You are receptive to what it is that you need to hear. And to start off simply, you still should always follow your passions, even on the days when they feel lackluster. But right now, there's something going on in the undertow that's holding you back. That second guessing energy is something from your past that's still trying to hold on to you to make you think that you need it in order to survive. And for spirit guidance, we also have the card of the bond and what's interesting though below that we have the card of battle a fight a duel if you will but it's sort of as though this past energy is trying to vie for your love and affection but that energy whatever it is that's making you feel low it doesn't belong to you and you don't need to own it in your life we're going to go ahead and cut the Crow Oracle. Hmm. Yeah, this is about you learning to let go of some very old survival instincts. It is interesting when you think about survival and the knights. Knights are very loyal. They're loyal for loyalty's sake, but in the past, you've been accustomed to being loyal to what will keep you safe. But now you're trying something new. And for the first time, you're learning how to operate out of your own passion as opposed to out of your obligation. Wow. Okay. So what the fuck do you think might be going on? Five of Pentacles and the Tower. You know, it, it is a little bit of that Jaws. You kind of know this is the inevitable is here. You, you, you know what's about to happen. You know what decision it is you actually are going to make if you haven't made it already. If you have already made the decision, it means that you might be second guessing, did I make the right decision? Both could apply in these energies, especially if I'm seeing this Five of Pentacles and it's almost like two people agreeing to just let something die. When we have the tower in this particular deck, we have the lionfish and it's an ecological disaster. A lot of climates cannot handle this fish because it'll destroy an entire coral reef, just like with one or two of these fishies. But there's a piece of me that's like, you know, it was an REM song. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. So some of the depression soup, it's, it's weird. It's not apathy. It is acceptance, <laughs> but it's a new way that you're experiencing these particular energies. And this is, makes a lot of sense. You're kind of just observing what's going on. 
some of you might think you're being lazy. And people might think that about you. But if you're somebody who's noticing that you're just kind of staring, you know, you, you go outside and you just kind of stare here at home. You know, there's probably a couple things you could do, but you just need to stare. <sighs> Music doesn't do the same thing for you. Even trying to do little bits and pieces of your artwork or, you know, your hobbies, you know, maybe a little bit of reading. The things that you are accustomed to distracting yourself with or engaging yourself with, you know, a couple of minutes helps, but there's a real, there's a perception that you're being encouraged to shed right now because you're not being lazy. In fact, you're actually connecting to the divine and the sacred symbols oracle. When I went to go do a pre-shuffle, we have the card of 33, a very frequent number, but we have the message, the moth, that's fiery, passionate energy. Moths just like, they just run to wherever it is that they want. They just gravitate towards the light. And at the top of the deck, we have divinity. You might have been looking left, right, and center. Your friends, your, your tarot readers, your books, your art, and trying to find answers. And when you're quiet and just observing, shutting off your brain, even as an artist, learning how to use your right hand brain is very critical. How do I look at this spider but not see it as a spider? You're learning how to get out of that logical brain mindset so that you don't put assumptions you don't tack on like weird symbology assumptions if this sounds like something that's making sense to you look up right brained thinking even just in the context of drawing like like um life drawing figure drawing even if you're not an artist and you can't like you know hold a paintbrush you know to save your life um Go check out right brain thinking to give you some clues on what that kind of mentality, how you can access that mentality. Because it'll help shut down the part of your brain that's telling you that you're lazy and depressed. Because actually what's happening is you're becoming divine. Because when we look at the higher guidance, we have the queen of wands, the knight of swords. There's been old energies that have told you that in some ways, like they might have ordered you around people who just kind of sat around, did their own thing, but they still felt it was OK to order you around, tell you to do things like I'm getting a little bit of Cinderella, Cinderella, night and day, it's Cinderella, wash the dishes like, you know, someone yelling at you like how you're not enough, how you're not doing enough and you are enough. To be able to sit in your own silence, especially when you're unaccustomed to it, this isn't the mental health breakdown you thought it was supposed to be. You're relearning how your brain is actually supposed to function. Because chances are, if you've already made this decision and you've already chosen to cross over the threshold, cross the border, you know, do not pass go, do not collect $200, you have released yourself from an old entitled energy. Remember earlier I was talking about knights. They are loyal for loyalty's sake. And you're beginning to realize no matter your gender, you get to be your own queen. You get to be receptive to whatever energies you wish to be receptive to. This is you coming into your own power and recognizing that, no, I'm actually allowed to sit here and care for myself. We have the card of community. And I think some of you are dealing with this ass backwards mentality where maybe you are devoted to your community or you wish to be a part of a community. And especially if you've taken a step back, it might have shaken your community. Oh, interesting. Huh, look what came back. We have the three of swords. If you remember before I went to go cut the, uh, cut the decks, we had the ace of swords and then we had the two of swords, but now we have a three of swords. I think you might have lost an, an entire community. Whatever decision it is that you made, like this is very much refugee energy. Your entire community is behind you on the shore, but you knew you had to make the right decision. And because I'm seeing a child here, 
it's also making a decision for the people that you care about, the people you love, that you love on. And I am for some specifically picking up children and keeping them safe. That won't apply for all, but that is going to apply for some. That said, what guidance does spirit have for you? Nine of swords, three of cups. That one's in the reverse. Whatever it is and whoever it is that you are leaving behind, don't be fooled when they come back to you with their pretty little eyes and they're like, what do you mean you're going away? Like, I thought you were there. You always said you were going to be there for me. What? Who's going to make me dinner? And sometimes the answer is, you can make your own fucking dinner. They have Lean Cuisine microwavables for a good fucking reason. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you need to... Start embracing this brand new idea. When you're the queen, you can speak up for yourself because we have wands and we have swords. Don't get me wrong. I love a little bit of sarcasm. Just make sure that you are speaking truly from your heart because if you have been accustomed to entitled energies and you have been a community leader, like, and this could be like a, like a literal community. This could be a job. This could be a circle of friends. Um, this could be a geographical location. Take it as it makes sense for your situation. But with this particular card, um, oh, I never remember how to pronounce them. Like they're the, 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 the Koras or the Kokas, like that starts with letter Q. But, um, these little creatures, um, we're, they tend to have it to hate naturally. There's signage everywhere, uh, mostly for children, which is funny because I think that's where I was getting some of this children energy from. There's actual warning signs saying, hey, do not approach these cute little mini teddy bears. They will bite you. They're super adorable and they will bite. This is a lot of protecting children and protecting, if you don't have children, you know, protecting pets. And if it's not pets, protecting your child's like nature, even protecting your extended family from whatever heartache, um, nightmare that you have been going through. I don't think you've been super honest with everybody with what has actually been happening. There it is. Oh, You've kept this bottled up inside of you for a very long time. And that's why this depression soup is getting ready to finally be released from you. That's where we have this like double tower energy going on. Memory, memories. Um, these, you know, these cute little friends, the people that might actually, who might sway you to return. It's sort of like you go to cancel a subscription for something and you have to go through. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. But what if I, we gave you 25% off if you decided to stay with us? No, I'm pretty sure. Are you absolutely certain? We'll give you six months for free on whatever this is. I'm absolutely fucking sure. There's some kind of energy, whether if it is just a mood but there could also be interference with people trying to convince you to come back. And I'm hearing come back to the cult. Um, this is a lot of manipulation energy that I am picking up when people try to ask you for money for charity, but they, you don't want to. And it's not even that you don't care about the cause. There's something about that person's energy that they're trying to manipulate you. I'm getting a little bit of... Um, senior citizens falling for scam artists energy. Um, you've been in the middle of a scandal and I don't think you've quite realized how scandalous this particular situation might be. And there's a reason why they're coming back to you and trying to negotiate with you. You know something that is going on in this community and they're trying to hide it. Oh, fuck. Okay. This is a very upsetting example, and this won't apply for anybody, but this is the story I'm being given. When I was a, a young kid, the church that I had attended at the time, the minister was called out for molesting one of the teenagers. And my parents were really taken aback by how the church responded. 
the church backed the minister instead of backing the teenager with who had a legitimate complaint that she was sexually assaulted by a leader in her community. And my parents with their two children at the time, they got up and left. I remember going to church one week and I'm like, mom, dad, how come we're not going to the same church? And like, you know, as we usually go to mom and dad are just like, we weren't growing there anymore. And that's perfectly satisfactory for a six year old child. But you may be divinely aware because I do hear message. You may also have evidence that something very traumatic has happened in your community. And you have people who are trying to buy your silence, hush money. Um, oh, this is really, and I think some of them, yeah, they're, they're trying to gamble that there's something that will keep you attached, whether if it is actual hush money or there's another one in here. What is it? Almost like writing it off and giving you a higher position of power as though to say, well, okay, we kind of lied to you. We sort of put this underneath the rug, but like it, things happen. Like, you know, how about like you help us rewrite some policy? And there's something about this energy that's, you see my hand right here? We've gone from, <laughs> we've gone from depression soup to super static. I, I actually want to get some deeper guidance on this because um this is unique and this is not going to apply to many people i don't think but it is important enough to bring up because i have seen some signs and synchronicities over the past several weeks about something coming to the surface for some members of the collective it's very vindicating. It is true justice. And it's very, very risky. It's difficult to go out on a limb in order to speak up for yourself or to speak against your own community, especially if they're leaders within a community. Dare to dream. If you are living in any kind of financial lack during this time and there's some kind of payoff, that they're offering you. This is your chance to really come into understanding your true abundance and your ability to manifest on your own. You probably have been connected with these people for a very, very long time because they gave you cred. Maybe uh, at the time you thought it would be an awesome reputation. Maybe there's some business dealings. I did mention work, but religious institutions can also apply, but this can apply to any kind of interest group, whether if it's like, you know, a dance community or if it is a um, like a sex positive community, even if this is also a community that has to do with children, um, there's something about whatever it is that you're going through. Someone may be trying to pay you off or or get you to doubt your own intuition chances are they might have a little bit of blackmail information that could probably give you the perception as though you could be stabbed in the back. But I do want to remind you because we saw two sixes of swords, you're already in the water. You're already halfway through. You've already crossed the line. And the fact that we have a message from divine, I am also getting, you are protected. Like this is a seven sided star, the sept, the sept, Hagenal. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not remembering the word, but there's seven points of protection that you are in, whether if you are aware of it or not. And it's going to be very important during this time, especially as you work through this depressive energy, make that clear first, because right now these, I'm going to, this is rare, but I'm going to call these people enemies. Um, we'll take advantage of that thick soupy energy in order to get you to second guess and we got a message of trust and a trusting message you can trust yourself if you have felt up to this point that maybe your instincts weren't correct and you wanted to give someone or someone's the benefit of a doubt this is your chance to really come into your own knowing that you, your intuition is correct about whatever this is is going on you hear the tone of my voice. There is a lot of fear that I'm picking up, but 
the more I speak into it outside of the depression soup, it's terrifying, but it's grounded. As you enter into this more self-trusting energy, you are going to be opening yourself up to more divine messages and divine guidance. A lot of the key notes that I have been picking up in this collective over the past few weeks is be here, be in the moment. Do not make decisions when you are feeling overwhelmed. These people use the the soupy energy as a tactic to keep you, I'm hearing the word, keep you drowned. So you are being called to really trust yourself. To trust yourself is to actually trust the divine. And even if you can't always see the light in the moment, you know it's there. You know there's a path set before you. This is not easy. Let's do a little clearing here. As you are able to start making choices for yourself, learning how to really manage your energy, learning how to really trust your intuition, knowing that you are making good decisions for yourself and for some making good decisions for children and children of the future. How are you going to feel once you've conquered Knight of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords, and this is the Queen of Swords in the reverse, and I'm hearing, boom, bitch! That's what I'm hearing right now. There is going to be a thundering silence from your stamina. Earlier, when we had that Ace of Swords, tucked behind it was the King of Pentacles. This is you willing to stand your ground. This is you willing to negotiate your worth, knowing that nobody can buy you off, that your integrity and your values are paramount. You have been calling out people for their lies. You have come into your own Queen of Swords energy. And anyone who's been trying to like tweet in your little ear to make you feel as though you're wrong, you're messed up. You don't know what it is that you're doing. What about me? The queen of wands, which, you know, she's totally buried. <laughs> I can't even get to her right now. She's just buried in all of the cards right now because it doesn't matter anymore. You have transitioned into some fresh, brand new energies and you're feeling so much more comfortable because when you have somebody who is in the Queen of Swords, in this case, the reversal, this is karmic energy. This is where they will look for your weak points. They will bring up the past. They will call up old things that you've done in the past. My, my favorite manipulation tactic by this energy is that they will send you an email with a roster of all of the wrongs that you have ever done. Every single vulnerable thing you've told this person, they will use it against you. And they'll even threaten to expose you because as long as you don't expose them, they promise not to expose you. You're called to start being open about things with yourself first. Some of that depression soup is realizing that there are going to be aspects about yourself that are going to be revealed to the world. And when I say revealed to the world, it could just be as simple as being revealed to lovers, people you love and care about. I see children here. So, you know, having to be open with children about something that you're not super proud of. But remember, whatever energies you're talking to, talk on their level. Like I gave in my example with my parents, they said, oh, we weren't growing. It's it. We decided to go someplace else. And again, six-year-old berries was like, oh, okay. Like I didn't think much of it. I technically didn't really like that church anyway. So I thought that was just a problem solved. It wasn't until 10 years later, my parents actually told me what the hell actually happened. They were protecting me. You are actually protecting what is important to you. This is the night that is loyal to what is important to self, no longer being loyal to other energies that would have you tied down and fight. How, how, how is it being phrased? That would make you fight to prove your loyalty. Yeah, I've, got, I've gotten some like burn battle energies in the last few weeks and yeah, I'm missing the word right now. It's like some weird MTV thing where, you know, this is definitely like Gen X or humor right now. 
But just having this all out war, there's a piece of you that's like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. This is very stable energy. This is what it's like to have the depression soup cleared. You actually are equally as stable, but you feel grounded and the fog has been lifted and you're starting to see how these people use these tactics on a lot of people. I'm willing to bet that um, as you open up to people outside of the situation and you tell them what actually happened, it's kind of like even after, say, like a breakup, you know, you go talk to someone's like, oh, yeah, so and so and I broke up. And most people are like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm not at the same time. I'm so glad you guys aren't together. People just keep to themselves. And chances are that whatever it is that you're going to talk about, can you just assume that you'll be fine? Could you just assume that this is exactly how it was supposed to be orchestrated so that you could understand what was going on in your life because you were in lack mentality. You sided yourself with the enemy because there was something within you that said you didn't have enough worth, that you weren't popular enough, you weren't lovable enough, you weren't sexy enough, you weren't a good enough parent, you weren't a good enough spiritual person. Just a lot of this, you don't have enough energy. This is a lesson for you to learn just as much as these people are going to have to deal with a lot of karmic retribution, but that can't happen until you are gone. They will continue to scavenge and for some, not all, they will probably try to use some kind of public retribution, retaliation. If you're concerned about that, there is a reading I did a week or two ago about retaliation. I do recommend you check it out. It'll help give you a bit of a <sighs> compassionate understanding why people behave that way. Because this has never had anything to do with you. These people need to be found out. And you don't even need to be the whistleblower. This is actually a very inactionable, inactionable night. This is you just standing your ground saying, no, I do not wish to be a part of this anymore. I've already halfway past the door. It's more energy for me to return to you than it is for me to move on to greener pastures. So I'm going to get Starseed Oracle. And before I go to shuffle, we do have Spine of Fire, number 29, self, truth, true self, passion, motivation, purpose. There is something about whatever this is that you are going through this is part of your own divine purpose. Because if we wish to manifest beautiful, amazing things into our life, we cannot do it when we are living in chronic, <laughs> chronic depression soup energies. I'm not saying that other one. Wow, I have some graphic. <laughs> I got some graphic guides, but uh, they can only work with what I, you know, it's, it's totally fine. Just ignore them. Nonetheless, for those of you who are still working through these energies, keep listening to that divine guidance and keep bringing it back towards yourself. If you are feeling unstable, shaky, overwhelmed, um, depleted, it's not a time for action. It's a time for inaction. And we have hydrogen atom. This is the very first step. Consciousness, beginning, faith. This is about you learning to clear your energy before you move forward with any of your decisions. Even if you've already gone ahead and chosen to continue moving forward with whatever this is that you're trying to get away from, you will have choppy days. That's normal. You've basically opened up the floodgates for divine to say, good, Oh my goodness, you're finally seeing it. Now we can start working at all the things that were un untouched in your reality. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be cleared out along with just this community, this situation, this person, whatever it is that you are walking away from. I'm getting one of those um when you like a little drain snake you know, you got to stick it all the way down to rip it all the way back up to realize how much you actually had in your energy that was really clogging your ability to touch in with the divine. 
And after that, we have 71, the temple of perfected essence, divinity, honor, responsibility, humility. And I'm hearing some say humiliation. It may feel like that in the initial term, but you're talking to a peer. It's normal at the beginning of making a decision that is not easy to feel humiliated, especially if you feel like you've committed a lot of your time and resources to a narrative, to something that other people expected of you, even just expectations you had for yourself. But think of it this way. If you stood up for yourself, even though it doesn't feel great at first, that humiliation is from other people. If you're looking after yourself, your true self, that humiliation is what other people will do to try and negotiate you to come back. That's why I was picking up some of this blackmailing energy in your guidance. Your journey is sacred. And if you're following your divine guidance, your journey is protected. Look what came back. I love it. Spine of fire. You are more than welcome to just be yourself. You saw through an illusion. You saw what was going on around you. And you chose to separate yourself from it. So many people don't figure this out. So many people submit themselves to mediocrity, lies, humiliation, and codependency. Because they're afraid of being alone. That they can't go at it alone. You are proving them wrong. I think that's the message. Thank you so much for sticking around. Whoever you are, I fucking hope this helped. Well, if you like my style, you're more than welcome to like, share, and subscribe. And if this didn't resonate with you, you know what? I'm happy for you. <laughs> You're welcome to go up to the search bar up here, you know, and look up some cute, like, fairy tale stories about Cinderella or Rapunzel and, uh, or whatever it is you're technically into. Good luck, everyone. Bye.